Welcome to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. In this podcast, I'm coming at you to deliver you a weekly dash of creativity to make your homeschool exciting for your kids, but for you too. We're going to explore all of the different ways to creatively homeschool. Games, field trips, unit studies, writing activities, kid businesses, art, and more. I'm your host, Julie Soule, longtime homeschool mom, shenanigan enthusiast, espresso drinker, and founder and co-owner of Soul Sparklets Art. I've helped thousands add creativity and joy to their homeschool, and I'm ready to help you too. Ready to get started? Let's go. Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Homeschool Podcast. I am your host, Julie Soul. So one of the things that I am asked for the most is how do I come up with the projects that I have for my kids? Now, if you're out there thinking, what projects? One of the things that I love to do with my own two girls is to do a project every single year. We have done the Pokedex that you can catch in a previous episode. We've done a kid newspaper. That was our project last year, which is also in a previous episode. And this year we are creating our own diner. Now this started out when we had friends come over on weekends and my kids were serving them things that nobody wanted to eat. So inside their play bowls, there would be carrots, there would be lettuce, and there would be things like worms cockroaches, snails, and you just name it. Now, my girls decided to call their diner the Yuck Yuck Diner. I'm not entirely certain where the name came from, but it has stuck around. Now, when you have kids that are that interested in something, often it is a really great idea to go with it. Now, you don't want to go with it in a way that's going to make kids get suspicious. So If you have them go and say, this is going to be your math, you got to be careful. Some kids are going to say, no, this is just something that we're having fun with. So how do you find a way to use what they're really interested in to create a project and to be able to get in math and language arts and so many other things? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Yuck Yuck Diner and the project that we're working on this year and how it might work for you. So the very first thing that we did is I found a copy of the Roald Dahl Whipple Scrumptious Words. That's right, Whipple Scrumptious Words. This was a magnetic set, you know, in those magnetic poetry kits I happened to pick up at a used bookstore, but I was very lucky. They were completely new when I picked them up. They have all sorts of words, so regular words, but words like Whiffle and scrum diddly and whipple and words that I don't understand, but they're fun. So I encouraged my kids to create recipes using those words. They had to create appetizers. They had to create main dishes. They had to create side dishes and they had to create desserts. And I'm thinking there might be another one in there, but I think those were the main ones. The appetizers, the main dishes, side dishes, desserts. Oh, and the drinks. I knew I was missing one. So I actually created one. They let me create one. I created the fabulous drink for the Yuck Yuck Diner called the Fizzing White Hippo Slush. Sounds like something that you would need after a long day of homeschooling. So we created these recipes and then we moved everything to Canva. And Canva, if you are not familiar with it, is a graphic software. There is a free version and there is a paid version. I use the paid version for my company, but the free version is great for kids. What does that mean? Does that mean you're going to have all the ads? Does that mean that you have to worry? There are an occasional pop-up where it'll say that something's only available if you pay for that particular version, but in general, it's pretty light. What the free version means is that some fonts and some of the graphics won't be available, but in general, enough are. And one of the things you can actually do when you're doing a search for a graphic is you can make it show only the free graphics, so you're not constantly seeing everything that isn't available to you. So I took my kids to Canva with these recipe ideas and we created a menu. I say we, I just got them started, but they created it on their own. Now, my kids are 10 and a half and just turned eight. If you're wondering if your kid could do this or not, my 10 and a half was at the computer. My eight-year-old was not able to do as much on the computer, but 
She was an eager and willing participant in helping move things around, deciding on fonts, and calling out what these items were. So if you have a little one and you can be the one at the helm of the computer and let your little one dictate. So the very first thing you should know about Canva is you don't have to create everything from scratch. Sometimes it can be really hard when you look at a piece of paper and it's completely empty. So one of the things Canva has is templates. So the first thing you can do is pull up the templates, type in the word M-E-N-U for menu, and you will have a bunch of ideas. You can ask kids, what is the mood of the menu that you're creating for your new diner? Are we talking fancy? Are we talking like a country diner, a breakfast joint? Are we talking a smoothie place? So they can decide and start thinking about branding. So we're getting into marketing here. We're looking at font choices, branding colors. This is the Yuck Yuck Diner. So they chose all these colors that are kind of muddy and dirty and slimy for theirs as their branding. And then as they're typing the names of these items in, they start thinking about pricing. You know, how much are they going to charge for these items? Where does the I go on the menu? Now, my own two chose a menu where most of the things do not have a description, as some menus do not, except for the main dishes. So then they got to type their menu description. So we're talking about spelling, typing, grammar, word use. All of these things are all put into a single fun menu, and then they have something that they can share with others. That's not the only part of the project. The Yuck Yuck Diner is going to need more things than just the menu. Now that menu was created. Once you have the menu, you can create a couple of recipe cards and Canva has templates for that too. So you can type in recipe cards or recipes and you're going to get templates to choose from too. So you can just start changing it around the way that you want. Now when they're taking something like the fizzing white hippo slush or the blue bog boar head, I believe was one of them. They're thinking about measurements. So now you're getting in math. How big is a tablespoon? Is that bigger or smaller than a teaspoon? What about a pound versus a kilogram? Are there any other large units of weight that we can use to put in our menu? So it's a really great way to get them understanding what measurements are, especially when they tell you, no, I want a lot of salt in this recipe. Well, what is a lot of salt? And when they tell you, they can even go into your kitchen, find the container of salt and try to figure it out. How much salt do they want? Do they want the whole box or container or just a little bit? So it's a great way to get math in, even if they're not actually making the recipe. The next is when they're writing the directions for the recipe. Again, spelling, grammar, word use, like adjectives and verbs, such as put these three ingredients into a bowl and then blend until frothy. Really great way to encourage those adjective uses. Also, This is a really great way to make sure their writing is clear and concise that others can understand it. So after they have completed a recipe, they can give it to you and see if you could follow it. Clearly, you're probably not going to have the ingredients for the fizzing white hippo slush, but you can read it to see if you did have those ingredients. Could you follow it? And this is a great opportunity to get out different recipes from other recipe books to get out handmade, like those hand-me-down recipes that you might have from your ancestors, and to take a look and see how do these recipes look? How do they feel? Do they have anything else on it? Like how many they serve? You could try to get into nutritional content for those recipes. So that's just a menu and recipe cards to go with a pretend diner. And your kids might not want the Yuck Yuck Diner, Your kids might be fascinated by another video game. They might have characters. They might want to create something where Mario characters would go to or something that exists in Minecraft or Roblox world or even My Little Ponies. It doesn't have to be a realistic diner. You could even study if other cultures and create something that is a kind of fusion restaurant, combining their absolute favorite cuisines and putting them together. So that's what I've done so far with my kids. I'm not going to give away what we're doing next, but every week I'm going to share the next step of the journey in the Yuck Yuck Diner. I will tell you we're going to be creating some specials. 
We're going to be creating floor plans for the diner, creating ads, and that means getting them in front of a camera to create their ads, learning kind of cinematography, and so on. And I cannot wait not only to do it with my kids, but also to share it with you to inspire you, which is exactly what this podcast is here for. Now, if you are not in the Creative Homeschool community on Facebook, you might want to head there because there's going to be a replay of a class I taught in how to get set up with Canva, and I'm thinking about doing another. So if you are interested in me doing another how to get set up with Canva for your family and your kids on that free account, send me a message. Send me a DM on any of the social media channels at Soul Sparklets Art and just put in the message, Canva me. That'll let me know that you are listening to this episode and you're interested in me doing another class. And what I'm thinking about is releasing a small course on this whole Yuck Yuck Diner when it's finished so that you can do it with your own kids, have all the templates available to you. And I'm really excited to be able to do that with you. So if you're not in the Creative Homeschool community on Facebook, come find us over there. And again, if you're interested, you can hit the replay or send me a DM and let me know that you'd like to be in on another class for how to set up Canva, which I'm doing live. And I would absolutely love to help you get started in this really incredible creative graphic design tool. And as we all know, all of these graphic design tools and creativity and all these apps that are out there, they're not going away and teaching our kids how to navigate them in a really useful way that they can take to whatever career or journey they want to do down the road. It's a really great thing to start with. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, everyone. Until next time.